the raw report here, and then we'll take your phone calls and your et ceteras after the break. Adam Pierce and Sonia Deville open up the show. They announced that Randy Orton is not able to compete tonight. No details. We don't know what's going on, but he will not be in the three-way main event. Remember yesterday, by the way? where I said, I'm not going to even preview the Raw show because every time I preview it, no matter what I preview, something that they announce doesn't happen. So it's a disservice to you, the listener, for me to preview the show and make you watch it and then something doesn't happen. This one, I do believe, uh, probably was out of their hands. I think that there was something where Randy Orton couldn't make it to the show. That's why everything was rebooked. I don't think this was a purposeful announcement and then uh, not deliver it. But anyway, he's not there. So Riddle shows up and he's got a letter. And the letter says that Randy wants Riddle to take his place tonight. Of course, the letter's clearly written by Riddle. Sonya and, and Adam Pierce are like, I don't know about this. But finally, Sonya just says, you know, I don't think it's a bad idea. So Riddle replaces Randy Orton in the main event of Raw. And so Riddle spends the entire time. Actually, he doesn't yet. He's, he's going he's gonna, to have a battle royal coming up where the winner will be in the main event. And so Riddle's going to enter the battle royal. If he wins, then he will replace Randy Orton. And if he wins, Randy Orton gets the spot in Money in the Bank. If it sounds complicated, it actually made sense. And it was, uh, it was better than I have explained it. I will say that much. So they do the battle royal. It's the usual battle royal um, largely a bunch of geeks, with the exception of uh, Damian Priest is in there, and Jeff Hardy, and the Viking Raiders, although they get eliminated by Omos. He yanks them out of the ring. And uh, finally, it comes down to Riddle and Damian Priest at the end. Riddle eliminates him, and so Riddle, playing the role of Randy Orton, goes to the main event to fight in the second chance match three-way. So uh, there you go. We had a Naya, Reginald, Shayna segment. Alex, Alexa's creepily watching on. A lot less magic with Alexa Bliss of late, which is a positive. Although she is still able to hypnotize people, which is, I guess, something they can do when the live crowds are back. Uh, we had some segments with uh, Jackson Riker. Jackson Riker is backstage. He's hitting himself with a strap to get ready for a strap match. He's preparing for battle, he says. Because he's a... Just a weird dude. We have uh, AJ and Omos doing a promo. Nikki Cross, who, by the way, Nikki Cross's new name, she's a superhero now, but she's not. Her new name is Nikki Ash. She is a almost superhero. A-S-H. Almost superhero. Nikki Ash. Even though she's got a superhero outfit, she's playing a superhero, and she's winning all of her matches. She's still not quite a uh, superhero. I can see the uh, chat going crazy. They're unaware of Nikki Ash. I'm not making this up. Nikki Ash, A-S-H, a superhero. Because now in 2021, you can't be a superhero in training. So Nikki Cross faces Shayna Baszler. Alexa shows up. Hypnos hypnosis, bunch of gobbledygook, and in the middle of this, there's a distraction, of course, and Nikki Ash rolls up and pins Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler has the most horrific record, and I think people notice, but I'm not sure, because they sort of kind of pretend like they're pushing her, but she never, ever, ever wins matches. Well, she lost another one here. Kofi Kingston MVP have a face-to-face, -face, which is excellent. Kofi Kingston is like, if I had a company, Kofi Kingston is like a perennial top guy, and uh, he would not have a fluky win and a fluky loss for my world title because this guy is a great, fantastic babyface. So he's going back and forth with MVP. It is announced that uh, next week on the show, they are doing Xavier Woods versus Bobby Lashley. If you're thinking... I could have sworn I just saw that match, but you have you have forgotten because I wouldn't blame you. They did that match last week in Hell in a Cell, and Bobby Lashley obliterated, blitzed, and massacred Xavier Woods. They did a one-week injury angle, and now they're coming back for a one-on-one -on -one match. 
This, of course, you know, to help set up the uh, Lashley Kofi Kingston match for the pay per view. But I can't say enough good things about Kofi and uh, MVP. They were fantastic in this segment, setting up next week's match. Eva Marie and Dewdrop are still together in a storyline. This is like, uh, you guys remember that invasion that Vinny and Craig and I were uh, reviewing? And they shot like six to eight months worth of angles in one night when. Uh, ECW returned, and then they teamed up with WCW, and then they did all that whole rigmarole. Well, uh, this is at a lower level than that, obviously, but they're already strongly doing the breakup of these two people. This led to, by the way, and if you're in the Twitch chat and you don't know what happened, buckle up, because you're going to get mad. Eva Marie and Dewdrop face Naomi and Asuka in a tag match. Dewdrop works the entire match. The entire two-minute match, by the way. Two minutes, 16 seconds. Dewdrop goes for a tag. Eva Marie drops off the apron. Dewdrop just stays in the ring and wins on her own when, with a running high cross, she just pins Asuka, of all people. And then Eva Marie announces that she is the winner of this match. Yeah, they couldn't pin Naomi. They pinned Asuka, who, as much as you guys talk about how they don't do anything with Asuka, they actually really protect Asuka if you actually go back and look at her win-loss record. But boy, they did not protect her tonight. Pinned in the middle in two minutes by Dewdrop in basically a handicap match. We had a segment with Morrison, Miz, and Ricochet and the gun... And then John Morrison faces Ricochet. Another very good match in the ring. The finish is spectacular. John Morrison is sitting on the barricade, and Ricochet does a springboard high cross onto Morrison, knocking him over the barricade to the floor. Obviously, there was a crash pad there, but let me tell you something. Crash pad or not, Morrison fell and like landed right on his head with a guy on top of him, even onto a giant 8-inch or 16-inch or whatever. That's a brutal bump there. But uh, they both appear to be alive, and that uh, was double count out, which uh, is a screwy finish, but I'm not going to complain about it because I like this match a lot, and we're clearly going to get a uh, another one. I don't know how many inches it was, everybody, but they call it a porta pit and it's like three feet, three feet of foam. I would presume they fell on one of those. But still, falling on that upside down on your head, no good. We had Charlotte, Natty, and Tamina versus Rhea, Mandy, and Dana. Don't bother trying to figure out who's a babyface and a heel. Rhea, Mandy, and Dana played the babyface role. Even though Natty and Tamina have been babyfaces, Rhea's definitely a babyface, according to the guy in the Thunderdome. Charlotte's a heel. But uh, they do the match, Charlotte gets the pin, and then Rhea jumps her and chop blocks her from behind and runs off like a coward. And uh, back to this Raw report here. We had uh, Jackson Riker versus Elias. And Jackson Riker spent the entire show strapping himself in the back. All these people were walking by, and this guy's just hitting himself with his strap. All to have a three-minute match. And no, I did not want it to be one second longer. Riker hit him with the strap and hit a slam and beat him. Anyway, they mean Priest and Riddle are in the back. Priest tells Riddle, Orton is lucky to have you as a friend, and Riddle is is touched by this. And then, of course, the main event of the show, Drew McIntyre, Riddle, and AJ Styles. They had a very, very good match. They took out McIntyre at one point, and then uh, Riddle and Styles did a bunch of stuff together. They were great. And then Riddle hits him, or uh, Styles hits Riddle with basically a burning hammer. McIntyre breaks that up. Riddle goes for a kick. He kicks the steel steps. He feels like he's broken his leg. They cart him to the back. Then we have McIntyre and Styles doing a bunch of spots. And then Riddle limps his way back out again. He hits the RKO on AJ Styles. But then, of course, Drew flies in with the Claymore kick and gets the pin. 27 minutes of professional wrestling to end the show. It was uh, it was great. So I really like that match. Better Raw than usual. I know some of you like me to just come on here and bury Raw, but like, there's good stuff on Raw. I'm going to tell you what to watch. And you should go watch that main event. You should watch the thing with Kofi Kingston MVP. And uh, the stuff with Riddle was good on the show as well. So overall, a uh, a much better Raw show than usual. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, 
you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.